skin to skin. Hi, it's Beck Mac here again at Pops Art and AU Review. And tonight, this is the most stellar opening for the incredible artist Maureen Hansen. She is one of, I reckon, Brisbane's best painters. And not only is she a great painter, she's a dancer, she's a singer, and she's got great fashion. And she's very popular. And she's right behind me, and we're going to talk about her work. Maureen, congratulations. Hi. Hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I also sing, but not tonight, no. Art and song don't mix. It, oh, well, I mean, it would in the case of Robert Forster. Because, you know, I painted him for many, many... Like, I said, would you agree to four hours? And then I conned him into 16 hours. Said, what are you up to over there? And he was writing the Grant and I book. And he was writing his... Um, uh, memoirs of him and Grant, and he he he, he com was a completely closed book actually. While well, I painted his portrait, but I thought um, the best way to express Robert Forster's music was putting a microphone on a um, doona, yeah. and that's what happened in the practice room. And also, Robert had a waste paper basket that was exactly like the very first computer's picture of a waste paper basket which when you put things in the trash was super reassuring to have a mesh basket <laughs> filled with yellow government envelopes. And you'll notice in Robert's portrait, he's not only got really bad 30-year-old curtains that look like they've come from a surfer's basement, it, he's also got like yards of A4 paper wrapped up in brown paper, which for a writer and an author of song is really like full of potential really. And his feet are up. And he's got the sense of an executive. So are we discussing the portrait, the picture over there? Yeah, we are. We I'm need sorry. to head over there. Should we walk? Should we walk, walk and talk? Yeah, we can walk because and talk. Because it's a busy... We've, we've got well, you, you want to help straight into Stafford? We can, no, we can, we can walk over and see Robert. I but, think it makes sense. Well, we'll get to Robert. But just quickly, this is a retrospective of your work, right? No, it's, a, it's it, called retrospectoscope because the idea, the idea is... The idea is... I've got to ad I admire your mic work. Yeah, yeah. Spectacular. <laughs> my cog, you might say. I'm, I'm born a twin in a family of eight, so that's pretty much my cog territory. <laughs> it's like, give me that fucking thing. So, um, also, a lot of artists are quiet and introspective, and I'm prone to those moments. You know, they're a little boozy. No. But you're a performer as well. But... Colour and one of the um, sweetest little vocal tips I ever received was by a nun at All Hallows when I had to sing Ave Maria for the gentleman behind me's wedding. Um, and, and she said, Just imagine you're putting a little matchbox on a very high shelf. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I said, Hey, sister, and she was a sister. I said, sister, imagine, I like to imagine that I'm singing through a stained glass window into a pocket of yellow and I'm singing through a lifesaver right through the middle of the note. Is this how you get the yeah, note? How I get the note? Spectacular. Like, like wow. um, archery. But, and when, when, it, when you translate, is that process part of how you paint? Like, is there a relationship between what you're thinking in your mind? Like, it's a very visual experience. So how, how does it work with the painting? Is there a, are they related at all in your creative process? That's a very good question, Beck. And the way that you penetrated me so solidly with the eyeball. It took me a while. Like, holy feck. She's really, like, up in my juice. And I know what to do about this because it, what matters is honesty and purity and clarity and often the space between things. Like, one of my favourite painters is Mirandi the Italian painter who just treasured the space between things and some of the best music. In fact, not really the two-pack that I rode in on in my Uber, but let's just say maybe a bit of gangster, maybe a bit of guru, maybe a bit of... He was, he, we got an old-school hip-hop dude turning up. For I think he wants to say goodbye quickly. Come on, you got a, you got a second. Oh, Morty, they're, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Aren't they? Okay, you're, no, you're hogging it now. What's your name? Patrick. Patrick. And quick, one word. What word, what word sums it up? Sums up Maud, Maureen. Um, vegetal. Vegetal. 
Well, we were going to say Bakund. I move around. Like, I know I, I've spent more than 1,070 hours making these paintings over two years. Well, let's head over uh, here. To call me Vegetal Patrick when I sing in your band? I, I think it's like, he's trying to steal it. He's, he's trying to steal it. No, come over here. I think Patrick was trying to get in on the interview, but we've no, had enough of him. A roll singer as well. That's what happens. He used to do the Triple Z late night hip hop show. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Now, so light. Light. You are the one of the few remaining people I know that goes out and paints in situ, airplane. Tell us about it. Like, what? what is it? You must know Brisbane Light more than any person. Yeah, you know what is really. I'm going to do this back. Wah, 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 wah. No, no, what I'm really going to do is be honest about this and say when you're observing natural light, you're not seeing colour in um, yellow, magenta, cyan, black, which is what your computer screen or your TV screen converts it into. You're seeing like warm blues, cool blues, warm yellows, cool yellows, and the light moves all the time. So if you can't keep up with that, then you're not good enough to be a painter. Yeah. yeah. Bring it on, bitches. <laughs> look at it for hours on end and sometimes when there's a bit you like you got to keep it and sometimes at 3 a.m. there's a purple cloud before cyclone Deborah or whatever that whatever that biatch was if you have a look at the night painting see the night painting behind that gentleman here we've got somebody who's very familiar with the pineapple lounge here Justin Brown the owner of the pineapple Woodford lounge celebrity but let's and, and we're still with Rebecca because she's a stunner. But let's let's have a look here behind. Can you, can you? Sorry, sir. Excuse me. Here we go. Let's get right, get right into this business. This business happened at about one o'clock. This great like little golden silver cloud over the streetscape, and see this thing happening here. This is the registration of a traffic light 2.5 kilometers away in Ashgrove changing color every three minutes and I was able to register that with the human eye, the human eye. And so that's kind of fun when you see sort of spectacular things like they tore down, what's in front of that is the Bunnings. But, but just quickly, a, 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 a traffic, but a traffic light is an everyday thing. But you've been able to translate into something that is so abstract but spectacular at the same moment. So I guess that's part of your process in a way, is taking the everyday and transforming it into something spectacular and revealing something about those things that no one else can. Is that sort of what you feel you do when you look at your work? Yeah, definitely. I really want to celebrate the everyday and I want to paint my life. Like, I was really lucky to be taught by William Robinson, um, who's twice won the Archibald and... Bill Robinson and June Tupperkoff are just such clever painters. But so one of the paintings that I've sold before the show involves an A4 sheet of paper underneath a vase. And you can see the corner of the A4 sheet sticks out over the edge of the table and makes a really lovely grey shadow. And it just sort of, it provides, like, like the kind of point of a dragon boat or a piece of architecture that floats up like paper, it becomes really magical but it's just a piece of A4 paper and there's millions of them and within that I think I, you know before I said I want to be in front of a painting painting <laughs> that's my terms no um, but you the application of the paints is absolutely the core of what you do would you say beyond the light like you seem to take so much pleasure and it's it's really that process in a way can you talk a bit about that like it's incredibly uh, it's a, it's a physical a action, really. Yeah, it is. Um, when, I, when I paint, I feel like the Buddhists say you can't offer abundance from emptiness. And so I squeeze out as much paint as I can onto rice paper. And then I work on it and like an insect or something, I shed one of those pallets, those rice paper disposable pallets, built up with like big piles of paint. Because it dries, takes 10 days to dry, but really after two days it's useless. Some of the paint that it costs $120 a tube, it lasts for five days, but the cheaper stuff dries out after three. So anyway, I ba basically um, have all these sort of insect husk palettes that I do away with because I want to offer abundance from emptiness. I want to put it all out there. I think everybody, I've worked in palliative care, teaching art for 14 years, and I think 
everyone's got a cupboard that's full of pa unused paint that some relative gave a relative to make them relax. And I, I love to teach people and say, just pour it on, pour it on. Now let's head towards Robert Forster. You lead the way um, because I want to talk about how, um, while we're walking and talking, I want to talk about how we're still going. Off with. And I just want to talk about how your life in Brisbane is such part of this really greater creative community and you've used that, you've weaved. What do you think is the essence of Brisbane in the creative artistic community? I think it's about being, having the freedom to be original. Or, or foliage or foliage or whatever the feck it is. It's fecund. It's fecund. And fecundity is what we're about. And you know, my friend, what did she say when she saw the lilies? It's fecund. Fecundity. Fecundity. Yeah, we want to get things that they're most alive, basically. Robert, look at those ice blue eyes. They yeah. cut a cake. And on that note, we might finish up. So thank you so much, Maureen. Congratulations. Come down to Heiser Gallery, see the work. And um